We wanted to make sort of a quick video. We just went to go watch The Green Knight last night and it was amazing, truly mind blowing. And it was also really synchronistic with what we've been talking about recently. So I just wanted to bring up a couple of things that were revealed in the film. I know we have already brought up the paintings a couple times in the last video, but trust me, this is some very juicy info. Now I don't want this to be a full breakdown of the movie, so I'm going to try not to give away spoilers, but if you do want the full movie experience, I highly suggest you guys go see it or rent it here on YT. They really don't make movies like this anymore, so it did really have this special magical essence to the entire experience that's worth noting. I think it's crazy because whoever directed this movie knows not only his lore and symbolism, but is fully aware of some ancient secrets that we're going to get into shortly. First, I guess I'll just read the description of the movie so you have some kind of base. It's an epic fantasy adventure based on the timeless Arthurian legend. The Great Knight tells the story of Sir Gawain, King Arthur's reckless and headstrong nephew, who embarks on a daring quest to confront the eponymous Green Knight, a gigantic emerald skinned stranger and tester of men. It's really great to see these old legends told in such a magical way using CGI in the modern day. I mean, honestly, the movie was like a trip to a certain degree since it's all about this journey of Gawain through these euphoric, surreal scenes. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and get to it. If you haven't seen our last video on Leonardo da Vinci and the ancient Renaissance artist, it essentially goes over how it was impossible for these artists to create the artworks the way we do in the modern day, or at least the way they tell us. I noticed many people were calling everybody idiots for even listening to the video because the simple solution was that these artists were just using a wash. I responded explaining how modern day science cannot find the particle size of these paints. They have dissected these old paintings and have found that they have layers of glaze that are 2 microns thick, but that they cannot find the particle size of the paints because it's too small to measure using the technology that we have. So we know that their paint particles were smaller than 2 microns. Yet, people are insisting that this was just done with a wash. With our modern milling technology, our paints today have a particle size of 15 to 55 microns. Adding water to modern paints does not make the particle size smaller, for this can only be done in the grinding process. It only makes the paints more diluted, where the particles have more space in between them, creating translucent paints. Go check out that video if you want a full description, but I think the big secret is revealed in this Green Knight movie, and it can explain what type of technology they were really using. It also explains why there's no brush strokes visible in these old Renaissance paintings, and why they had no measurable particles of paint. Because they weren't using paint. Basically, he goes through a very long journey and ends up at this castle exhausted. They take him in and feed him, and the whole time you can see that he feels very uncomfortable with the whole thing. The woman keeps coming on to him and insists that he must have his portrait made, as they are fully aware of his journey and want to document him or have some kind of reference, I guess. Now listen to this. He says, no, I've had my portrait done, and she says, not by me, with a smile, implying that her paintings are very special. The scene then cuts and she removes most of the light in the room, creating a single direct light source. Then she applies some type of wash to the canvas, it's not just so but some type of chemical application to prime the canvas for receiving light. She then goes to the door to reveal this Antiquitech device, which is some type of pinhole projector that allows light to pass through and project the scene in the other room on the wall. Like some type of camera obscura, but used for the purpose of some old photography. She tells him to stand very still, and then after a few seconds, she closes the pinhole device. When he sees this painting, he's completely amazed and says, that's a queer way of doing it. So to me, it's completely obvious that the director of this film knows exactly what this is. I'm sure there are many who know about this ancient version of photography. And it's interesting because you can find information on these ancient artists using camera obscuras, but why is it so out of the question to think that they could have devised some type of chemical for capturing this light onto a canvas? She basically was creating what is known in photography as a darkroom. We will go over in another video about the history of photography, but it's clear that there's some type of cover-up to the progression of this technology. 
it's too advanced to just come about out of nowhere and you know there's something up when the backstory is they just discovered it by accident. A camera works essentially the same way, the only difference is that this is done on a larger scale with a room, but the camera has the same principles with mirrors projecting onto a chemical plate. The interesting thing is that in the film there's no doubt that they're using some type of camera obscura technology where the image is being reversed. The only difference is that they're projecting it onto a surface that will capture this light instead of being used for tracing as these art historians tell us. So we know that these art historians already admit that these artists were using camera obscuras, but they have purposely hidden this knowledge that they possess the ability to capture and store this light. Why? Because it would expose the ancient history of photography and the fact that many of these paintings that came out of the Jesuit Catholic Church were not created in the fashion that they were told. It gives them power to be the greatest creators of art in history, and so they keep this technology hidden. I also mentioned in the last video that alchemy could be involved and I do think that this is another aspect of this scene in the movie that is being implied. Without saying too much, this entire scene is magical in that you don't understand till the end of the movie that the painting is connected with a magical spell that she was casting on him. And you even see the painting towards the end as it has something to do with keeping him alive. That's all I'm going to say. but. Keep that in mind when you're watching the movie and tell me your thoughts on if you think there's an alchemical magical component to this as well. Now, there is another secret revealed in the movie. During his journey, he's exploring through these mountains that seem to be in ruins. You can see one part where he enters a cave that looks as if it is a castle merged with the mountain itself. This mountain used to be some ancient giant castle but was destroyed somehow. And in this next scene, as he's going through these burnt up ruins and this destroyed landscape, he comes across these titans. Honestly, I think this might be my favorite depiction of titans I've ever seen. It really has this Attack on Titan vibe. Just imagine if they made a movie with this level of CGI, but to me, it seems obvious that this is connected with the surrounding landscape that he's going through. These titans seem to be walking around aimlessly and possibly could have been responsible for the destruction of these lands, although they do seem peaceful. Sort of like whales as they do start singing at some point. And then he asks the titan if he can get a ride, so it seems as if they do have the intelligence and also the ability to mate as there is a baby in this scene. I think that all of these titans were female, so maybe the male ones are the more dangerous ones, but yeah, I just thought that this was very interesting and in how the director leads to these titans right after he passes through these mountains that were essentially destroyed, burnt up castles. Now, I didn't want to say too much about this, but the whole movie is about the Green Knight or the Green Man, and it's a whole other component to all of this, because you find this symbol on many of these old Tartarian buildings, and it may be some type of homage to the old world of paganism and magic the true realm in which these buildings originated. There is more I could say about the movie, but I don't want to ruin it, and there's also the symbolic component of it all, so if you guys enjoyed this and want a further breakdown, let us know. But tell us your thoughts in the comments, do you think this is what the renaissance artists were using in their paintings? All we can hope is that our minds may be unveiled. Let go of everything you think to be true. Relax the mind and ask the question. Do I truly understand what this reality is?